best in daughters, sisters, and wives. They're gonna change our lives. Big women, big girls. They'll make a better world. Invest in her. And now here's your host, Catherine Gray. Welcome to this week's episode of Invest in Her. I'm your host, Catherine Gray, founder of She Angel Investors and co-founder of the She Angels Foundation, both designed to help fund women. And today's guest is a woman that is a literary agent and attorney, and she helps women publish their books. So if you're wanting to become an author, she's your girl. Please welcome my friend, Tisha Morris. Hi, Tisha. How are you? I'm great. How are you, Catherine? I'm great. I'm great. And of course, we met through your lovely wife, who is also a dear friend, Rachel Lang, who, by the way, just launched her book, uh, Modern Day Magic, which I love. And I'm gathering that you helped her with that. Well, I helped her motivate her. Yeah, okay, <laughs> good. To get it well, done. Everybody needs that motivator. Yes, you yes. If you're support. in my orbit, then you're going to have a book published. Exactly. <laughs> I have the the, uh, the the lucky charm when it comes to book publishing, which is why I decided to help other people publish books. Yeah. I love that. And uh, my wife too just uh, launched her book, which is yes. uh, a children's book. Uh, yes, I love it. Cash Mountain Mystery uh, about our uh, grandson and teaching kids how to recycle. So um, same with you. I've been a big supporter of hers, a cheerleader of hers. And uh, that's that's great. We both have wives that are off authors. Yes. Yeah. Now, you and I are both authors as well. And um, you are both a literary agent and an entertainment attorney, which I find is such a great combination because who doesn't want their literary agent to also know the law? Like you're like this is a perfect combination of why you're so great to work with if somebody out there wants to do their book. So we're going to talk about that. First, a little bit about you, though. Uh, you were born in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. That's right. Right. <laughs> Yeehaw. Yeah, I was just telling you, I was just talking to my nephew there. I love Nashville. I've only been there a couple of times, but I imagine it was a fascinating place to grow up in. It was. And actually, my dad was the was a pharmacist. It was the we lived just outside of Nashville and where all the country music stars lived. And my dad was the uh, the local pharmacist. And so he filled the prescriptions of all the country music stars. So there was a really interesting, uh, interesting little world that I lived in. Absolutely. Um, and so being in that creative environment, I imagined influenced you. Yeah, it probably did more than I realized. I unfortunately don't have any musical talent whatsoever, except for the fact that I love music. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, as far as that, what Nashville is known for is the music. It didn't really rub off on me. And so I've actually um, will probably go into it in the legal in the legal part of it down the road um, with the music. But um, unfortunately, that part. But it also does have a it was like the original publishing um, for for. Uh, for well, actually, the gospel music led over into publishing for Christian um, booksellers like Thomas Nelson and so forth. So it did become a big publishing city as well in the um, in the oh, Christian I did not markets. Know that oh, yeah, interesting. And y- when you were six, you published a little newspaper, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You got started yep. early, girl. Yep, yep, yep. Publishing was always part of part of my. Um, or, you know, writing and publishing have always been part of my um, path. DNA. And when I was an, when I was an attorney in Nashville, or, or when I was start first started practicing law, it was actually writing legal articles and journals. Um, um, and that, that kind of, so writing has always been the one through line through my career that has taken a lot of interesting uh, turns. Yeah. Like most entrepreneurs, I know you've done a lot of uh, different things um, in in a variety of, of fields, but like you said, that one thread has always been uh, the literary part of it. And you've written five books yourself, right? That's right. Yes, yes. So tell me a little bit about that. You can talk about uh, all of them, or I know you have a new one coming out, so I know you want to talk about that. 
let's let's talk about that content and some of your other books. Sure. So I, uh, when I did live in Nashville, practicing law was not really. Um, I was doing bankruptcy and foreclosure work, which was you know, um, which was very not not fun at all. Um, yeah. I went to the healing arts, um, and and that's where I, I finally kind of. Um, well, for lack of better words, like found my heart, you know, I kind of grew up with wanting to be this attorney and make a lot of money. And then that wasn't, that didn't fit the bill. Uh, and so the healing arts is where I finally did my own healing and my own healing journey, and then began to help others with that. And, and it's in that sector in which I wrote four of my books. And, um, and the publishing, like I said, was always, my first book came, just kind of fell in my lap. And it was just like, one of those things that just doesn't happen to everyone um, or me for my second time in my second book. It's always the sophomore slump, you know, after the first one. Um, but I learned a lot in the publishing process and have worked with a great publisher for my last three books. And, and then I've also self-published one of my books um, that I got the rights back to. So I got to experience what that process is like, and then also help people with, um, with self, self-publishing as well. And I have a real appreciation for both tracks and I, I can see both being extremely beneficial. And I appreciate both tracks of traditional publishing and self-publishing, which I think makes me um, kind of a, a good person to help people make that decision, which is if you're a nonfiction author, it's a, purely a business decision, um, which I think a lot of people forget. (laughs) I'm so glad that you're bringing this up. That's exactly what I wanted to talk about today, because if you're out there thinking that you want to publish a book, there are so many options, you know, going the traditional publisher route, doing your uh, own self-publishing, which is becoming more and more popular. I think I read 80% of people self-publish. However, there's that hybrid that more and more people are really adapting to where, yeah, you're self-publishing, but you're kind of doing it in a way that you're working with someone like yourself that's helping with distribution, marketing, and all of the things it takes to launch a successful campaign. Because let's face it, it takes a lot to launch a book. Um, It has to be an endeavor that you're super passionate about and you're doing it for the right reason. And uh, there are many reasons somebody could be doing it. It it could be to make money or it could be to build your business, right? Um, Or uh, just for personal reasons that you want to do it. Uh, what, What is your advice to someone that wants to um, they have an idea and they want to get started writing a book. Where do they begin? Well, a lot of people want to jump to the publishing stage, and for you know that's that's obviously way down the road. You, if you're just thinking about I have an idea and for a book, then the first step obviously is to start getting words on paper, and that's a, a step that a lot of people want to <laughs> jump over. <laughs> yeah. Um, and um, but you really just got to start writing and, and get getting getting words on paper, getting that first draft, even if it's in in Lamott's words, a shitty first draft. You just got to get it out. And it's not going to be, it's going to be ugly and that's, but you have to start with that. So, you know, I, I break down the process of there's the writing and then there's the publishing. And then at some point they start to, you know, overlap and merge, you know, when you're at least through your first draft, but you're not even there until your first draft um, is, is, is on paper. And, you know, with, with nonfiction, which is my specialty and probably a lot of your audience would be um, fall in the nonfiction category. Um, you don't have to have a completed book um, before you can start thinking about your publishing options. Um, if you're going to go the traditional publishing route, then you you just need a, a good, a really good a book proposal that in, will include two to three um, chapters. And those chapters do need to be extremely well uh, edited and like a well-oiled machine. So usually you will need to have a good idea of what the whole book is going to contain um, because the chapter and chapter summary will be included in your book proposal, but you don't have to have the whole book perfectly written. Okay. So, um, you know, at some point during um, the writing process, perhaps when you're done with the first draft, that's when you start to think, Hmm, what, 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 what are my publishing options here? And the reason why you, don't have to know that in the beginning is because in my opinion, whether you're going traditional publishing hybrid or self, either of those paths, you need to believe in your book and whether you're going to self publish it or you're going to try to get a deal with Harper Collins, you need to believe that 
uh, even if no one is going to buy your book or even if no one's going to publish your book in traditional, that you believe it in enough that you will self-publish it if needed. To me, that's what the, that, that's the, um, that's how much you need to believe in this book and, um, and not, not have to worry about getting a publisher's um, stamp of approval on your idea or your book. You know, someone said something interesting yesterday that's kind of in this world. And they said, uh, in this publishing world, and they said, um, a lot of people think in order to validate themselves, they have to go with a traditional publisher like HarperCollins or some big name. And uh, that the actuality of it is, is that with now people buying books online, that it's really the cover, the title, the content uh, that really drives the book. And that's why a lot of people self-publish. Of course, people have to be able to find the book so that marketing and distribution part are really important too. So you help people from A to Z come up with the concept, help them uh, write it or edit it, whatever they need, uh, help them distribute it, help them create that proposal if they want to go the traditional route, right? Yeah. Or help them decide what the hybrid would look like if they want to self-publish. But most importantly, it's about having a super successful campaign to get it out there. And so you help with everything from A to Z, correct? Yes, except for the marketing. Marketing is not my, I have had to do tons of over my, my own platform, but it's not something that I, uh, that I help people with. Um, but you actually. should probably refer somebody. Yeah, or, absolutely. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. that's the nice thing about working in that network is that, you know, we all have different contexts and, you yep. know, like you said, everybody has their strengths and, I think it is great to have a literary agent that has a legal background like yourself, because there will be legal things that have to come into play uh, when you're writing a book. So that's definitely a leg up that I feel like you bring to the table. Now, you do coaching and workshops for people that want to do books, correct? Tell me a little bit about that. So, yeah, I can work one on one and, and help you develop um, a strong, you know, strong um I call it story. Story arc would be with fiction, but it could, a good, 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 solid concept that's that's sellable. Um, and then you know, I'm not a big hand holder, so like I, I, my ideal client is someone who they are committed to writing this book. You know, they don't need someone to check in with them every week. They are self motivated. And someone who, which I imagine most of your audience is like that. I mean, like if if you're a woman, a, a woman who's in your and. Catherine's orbit, you were self-motivated. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't want to be micromanaged either. So I get you. I think it's just good that you have somebody that, hey, you can bounce stuff off of, you have somebody to guide you. Somebody has been there, done that many times over. Um, I think, you know, if someone's looking for someone like that, that's where you reach out to Tisha Morris. Yeah. And then helping make that decision is traditional publishing route better for me or a self-publishing route. And like, as I mentioned in the beginning of, the sh of your show, um, that really is a business decision and you have to look at your business as a whole, um, you know, and, what you, and like you said, what is your goal for the book? For nonfiction authors, a lot of times it's just a, it's a really good business card that gets you into doors, it gets you on podcasts like this, um, it helps you build your brand, it helps you upsell to other um, programs or offerings that you have. And, um, and you have to kind of look at it that way. If you're a first time author, um, that, that is how that's, that's the best way to approach it. Um, you know, take a, take a write off for the cost of the book, because if you're going to self publish, it's going to, you know, it's going to be a little chunk of money, um, doing a year when you need a write off. Um, and basically it's a marketing expense. Um, like I said, it gets you in doors that you otherwise couldn't get in. It packages your message, your program, your mission into this. And that's what, why we love books. It like makes an organized body of your work that you can easily you know, put out into the world. And it, it, it just really um, makes your brand cohesive. Um, and so that, that's really the benefits. If anyone's wanting to get rich off the actual sales of the book, I would reconsider your, your goal um, if, if you're a first time or even second time or even a third time author um, until unless you um, kind of hit the, the big five publishing, then I would see your book as, um, as, a, marketing, uh, as a marketing tool. Right. I agree with you. And, you know, but I will uh, say that I get a kick out of this and you will too, being an attorney, is that they say that 
uh, people tend to uh, hold authors in higher esteem than any other type of, um, you know, uh, position, doctor, mm -hmm. attorney, whatever, which I found fascinating. And the reason I think that is, is because almost everyone has a book in them, mm -hmm. but a very, even though a lot of people do make, uh, create books, I'd say 95% of people don't at least. Uh, so it is a very small percentage of people it really in the long run that actually are yep. authors. And, you know, a lot of people talk about it, but do you want to do it? And so I say, you know, if you really want to be an author, it does give you a lot of credibility. It can help your business, but also just, you know, your um, self-esteem to have accomplished this um, that, uh, Tish Morris is uh, a great one to reach out to at tishamorris.com or entertain, uh, excuse me, Morris entertainment, Morris entertainment.com yeah. um, to reach you and, and, and talk to you about how you can help them, you know, get started and accomplish this great um, achievement in their life. Uh, having their book, it's something no one can ever take away from you. Once you've done it, uh, I've done one myself and I have another one coming, but I want to talk about the new one that you have coming out. Tell us a little bit about that. I know it's coming out in 2022. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Um, it's called missing element hidden strength and it's all about, so I um, had a career as a feng shui expert and um, which still kind of is always literally around me. Uh, and, and so the, the basic, one of the basic principles of feng shui is what we call the five elements and it comes out of Taoism and the five elements is um what we see in nature um, with the wood and the water and all these things. And so what the five elements are is actually the creative process of bringing ideas into material, into the material world. And you can think of it as writing a book. Um, you get the idea, you start putting pen to paper, you start writing it and you start editing it and then you complete it. That's the five element cycle. And you can apply this process to any creative endeavor you're, you're doing, or even a relationship for that matter. And so the premise of the book is we have all these elements within us, but there's one that's kind of our Achilles heel. This book helps you um, name which one that is for you, taking a quiz and answering questions. And then the book will help you transform your hidden, your, excuse me, your missing element, and it becomes your hidden strength. Um, it's kind of the Achilles heel that keeps us um, maybe not finishing the book or afraid to start the book uh, somewhere in that creative process where you tend to get stuck. And so that where therein lies your, um, as uh, Joseph Campbell would say, um, therein lies your treasure. And uh, so that's, that's how the, um, the, the premise of the book is really up-leveling um, our, our, our life and our work um, by finding these, these little hidden areas and transforming them. I love that. I mean, that's brilliant. Um, you know, people all the time, I think, wonder to themselves, why aren't I writing that book? Why mm -hmm. aren't I getting this project done? And I love that your book is going to uncover for them what that hidden reason is and how to activate that to make it a gift instead of a hindrance. Beautiful. Yeah. And it, it, it'll, the same, the same uh, element, so to speak, will show up in all areas of your life. So wherever you keep rubbing up against something, um, whether it's a relationship, you know, for me, it's uh, like, committing is like staying in the fire, staying, like staying, like I have commitment phobe, phobe with, with everything. And it's the fire <laughs> element. I can't like get through the fire. Um, whereas with you as a Sag, as a Sag, you're going to be like, give me all the fire I can take. Right. Um, <laughs> I'm all in. <laughs> Bring it on baby. <laughs> um, so, which is your, you know, we all have a primary element as well. Yeah. So your fire is, it's kind of like, you know, the softball that life throws you, you can always handle the fire element. Um, so we have, we have these, these, um, natural strengths, um, as well. So anyway, I'm really excited I love to, that. I can't wait for that to come out. Um, that'll come out in 2022, right? Yeah, in the write fall. down the name yeah. of that. Tell me the name of the book again. Uh, missing element, hidden strength. Um, I love so that. missing element, hidden, hidden strength. strength. And there's a subtitle that's long that I won't, won't, uh, it won't confuse you with. Oh, but. come on. Tell us the, the <laughs> subtitle. I want to hear well, it. I just, the publisher helped me. We, we, we kind of uh, had a big meeting about it. Um, so apply the natural strength of all five elements to unlock your full creative potential. 
Love it. I mean, who doesn't want to unlock their full creative potential? Right? We all I do. Know. So yeah. I can't wait to get that book. Yeah. You know, and it's it also, you know, so much of my career has been like I'm on the creative side, I'm on the business side and kind of helping merge those worlds. And that's really what the, the five element pro process is. It's the yin and the yang. And I think that's where we all are in this new iteration and this this 3.0 version of the world and of ourselves. It's like we're joining, you know, combining the right and left, our right and left hemispheres, uh, literally and figuratively, and kind of up leveling into this new game. And so that's a lot of um, kind of the, the underlying premise of this book. And I think that's where we are collectively. We're ready for this up leveling to happen. I, yes, I think we are ready. And um, I know there's people out there listening that want to launch their book. Um, Tisha Morris is an excellent literary agent. Um, like she said, she does both coaching and workshops you can participate in. If you want to get on that path and not hold yourself back anymore, but actually get that idea on paper and launched into that book you've been dreaming about, right? And I know... I will tell you, Tisha Morris is just like the most authentic uh, and genuine person you could be working with, uh, as well as smart. And uh, she is going to be a great partner in this for you. Uh, if you have an opportunity to reach out to her at TishaMorris.com or uh, Morris Entertainment. Uh, also, uh, where do we find you on social media? Okay. Um Tisha L. Morris, L is in Lee. Um, Tisha L. Morris is uh, me on Instagram, TikTok. I have lots of writing and publishing TikTok videos. Um, fun. Yeah. And whatever else. I'm like, I'm pretty easy to find. Um, Are you on LinkedIn? I, I'm on LinkedIn, Tisha awesome. Morris. Um, so you know, everything's either Tisha Morris or Tisha L. Morris. Yeah. Okay, great. I always yep. say, what the L? What the hell? <laughs> I like it. <laughs> well, everybody, you can, of course, find uh, us also on Instagram, uh, Catherine Gray at Invest in Her and also She Angel Investors. We're on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Uh, Twitter is She Angel Invest. And uh, you can visit our website, uh, sheangelinvestors.com. We have uh, the podcast on there, uh, as well as e-course that we just launched called Six Ways to Fund Your Business. Um, I'm all about helping fund women and helping women to live their dream. I'm so happy to have you on today, Tisha, because I love that you help women launch that dream of having that book that they want out there in the universe. And let's not have them hold back on that anymore. Reach out to yep. Tisha and get that get that project going. Yep. 2022 is it? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for being on and lending oh, your my honor. story and your expertise. Thank you, Catherine. Everybody, make it a great week. Remember to invest in her. Our theme music was created and produced by Lindsay Tomasic.